And as weavers have passed the test, or passed the imitation game, as it is called, and yeah. uh, I know there's a lot of arm waving to say passing the test. A lot of AI people don't like referring to it that way, and I understand that. There's a lot more to it. But sure. in terms of what Turing set out and how he defined things, um, I, I, I think this year we're going to see it happen. So that, that's, that's for yeah. me is a big one. Sure. And that's not sort of on the horizon, two or three. That's going to happen in 2008, so uh, people got to watch out for that. Yeah, I'll be watching for that, that's for sure. But, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting. I'm sure it will make a lot of headlines around the world. Uh, anything else uh, that you've been uh, kind of watching recently as far as robotics, cybernetics? Uh, <laughs> well, certain I, have trends. To, I have to say I was called up for the local radio station, but I think this is not so much a, a proper AI thing, but uh, there's a film coming out called um, Perfect Woman or The Perfect Woman, and oh. <laughs> uh, AI Robotics have put out what I think is something of a spoof to say that uh, there is a perfect robot woman now if you want to put your order in, and I think you can watch it on YouTube, oh. this uh, <laughs> supposed robot woman. But I have, I have to say, I think we're some way away from, unfortunately, maybe, as some might feel, having a, a robot woman or human or male sure. that is available by mail order. Yeah, I think that's a little ways off. I know uh, over in uh, Korea and Japan, they've uh, come a long way in producing uh, uh, androids, I guess you could say. Some uh, pretty realistic uh, looking, I would say, androids, but uh, not so much in function. Uh, they still don't have quite, the, they wouldn't pass the Turing test, let's put it that way. Uh, <laughs> That's right, yeah, they, they, look, they look appropriate and uh, particularly facially they can be quite good, some oh, of them, but uh, sure. not, not uh, walking around the home and doing the cleaning and cooking and uh, <laughs> no. the, uh, yeah, I guess the we'll, sort of a step, the Stepford wife, I think, is uh, what they're selling. What they're selling, yeah, I, I guess we'll have to settle for the Roomba for now. To do the vacuuming, although, you know, people do anthropomorphize their Roombas, I've heard. Uh, I've heard of people naming their Roombas and treating them like pets and even taking them with them when they go on vacation, which is... Yeah, yeah no, I, I think that's quite right. We, we had some little robots um, that we used to demonstrate at schools and colleges, um, and even it became, if people check on the web, something called Cybot. This was the commercial end. Unfortunately, it didn't hit it in America, but it, it just about hit everywhere else. So. Uh -huh. And, and the, the children there were very much, oh yes, it, it needs a rest now, it's tired, it's been moving around, and they give it a name. It very much had its own personality as far as they were concerned, yeah. Sure, and I think that's one of the keys of how uh, the Turing test may be passed a little bit earlier than expected in that people anthropomorphize with something that's very near, you know, human consciousness, or what they perceive as, uh, if they give something empathy, then they're more likely to uh, let's say, uh, ascribe some sort of consciousness to it. Uh, oh, yeah. But, I mean, it, it's a question as to, uh, looking at it the other way, why they should assign consciousness to a human. I, I think because the human, maybe you see the human, and they, the, the person looks human, so you assign all because you think they're human. Whereas when you can't see them, it becomes a whole different ball game when you've got no idea. Um, so, in a way, yes, assign, assigning empathy to a machine, if you're not sure when it's a machine or not, then, uh, and even if, even if it is a machine, maybe you, you think, oh, well, what the hell. Yeah, I guess so. Well, on, on that uh, point, I think I'll uh, conclude the interview for this afternoon. Once again, I want to thank you, Professor Warwick, for making time uh, for the members of the Institute to uh, uh, get your perspectives on cybernetics and the future of robotics and AI uh, and uh, such topics. So, uh, thank you very much, Professor. Great, and good talking to you. Have a good, have a good evening. And you, thanks very much. All right, that is Professor Warwick, Kevin Warwick of the University of Reading in the UK. The much promised interview that we had been working on for the last couple of weeks. And thanks for everyone who tuned in this afternoon. And of course, it will be available in the future as a recorded episode. You can always check it out here on the Ustream channel, as well as all of our other interviews that have gone on. Uh, since we began the live stream broadcast. So, have a good afternoon, everyone. See you again on Sunday.